Uh, welcome to Leadfoot TV. Uh, we're here today with Anton. You, um, I, my first ever car video was of Anton's RX-8. Uh, so it's Anton's RX-8 Mark Two. Yeah, so it's now. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, about a year and a half since we did it last time. And a lot, a lot has changed. So um, I'm going to film. Rob's going to walk you around with Anton, and we'll um, just have a look around what's been done since we last. Because yeah. last time we filmed it, the amount of questions he got, yeah. the guy, how's he done this, how's he done that, I yeah. think it's good to speak to the guy who did it himself. Yeah, okay. And he'll sort of give you a rough idea of uh, how to do things. Um, the car is a 2005 um, 231. Um, I got it in 2007, so I've had it now for 11 years. Um, it's quite a long time to own an RX-8, isn't it really? Considering especially like most people tend to keep them for six months <laughs> and then flog them when they realise that the when fuel they economy break. is absolutely... Oh, when they break, <laughs> yeah, when they break. But, see, it's good because we can relate to each other about these horrendous <laughs> issues that we have between each other's cars. Well, I had it for... Um, two years before the engine started going when it had done 60, 60,000 miles. Yeah. It was then left on the drive for about 12 months deciding whether to scrap it or... Very much an RX-8 point but, in the life, but luckily, thankfully, you managed yeah. to do the right thing and save it. Yeah, well, we found, um, I found a garage called Rotary Revs in Leeds, um, who came highly recommended, and they really, uh, Ben Dunn, the guy that runs the place, couldn't do enough for me. Um, managed to save it, um, probably the best thing I'd ever done. Uh, and then on that engine, we ran it for about 18 months, and then I decided to go um, half bridge port yeah. for it, um, yeah. and try and get a bit more power out of it. Um, I'd made the decision by that time that I was going to modify it and keep the car. I wasn't going to get rid of it. So, which is good, I think, because it's just such a shame that people nowadays, because they're so cheap, that Ben was telling me this yeah. problem. See, I know Ben as well. We see, yeah. we, we all know. We all know. I can, I can yeah. say yeah. what about yeah. what he's saying yeah. here is that Ben is is the very, I think the very best really. Yeah. For yeah. This, this end of the country, especially yeah. for yeah. rotary specialist. Yeah. Um, but he was so he was telling me like the, the problem is now the values of these cars have dropped so little that people want to try and run them on a shoestring and it just, it just can't happen no. really. No. If you want to look after it and keep it going. You can't it's, run these cars on the shoestring anymore. It's not, a, it's not a cheap car to run. Um, fuel economy isn't brilliant, um, but it's probably one of the best driver's cars out yeah. there. Yeah, and think, we were just anyway. talking about this before with Ash especially. Like, he drove the, the F, is it FK2 Civic Type R? Yeah, yeah. And uh, 
he was saying like how capable it is, and my my father's got a had a Leon Cooper 280 at the time, and I drove that, and we're just saying that how these modern hot hatchbacks are so capable and so fast, yeah. but in doing that they've sort of lost some of the character that, yeah. that made the car yeah. special, and I still think the RX-8 to this day is one of the modern cars that still retains character. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I, I still think now, I don't think there's many better looking cars out there, to be honest. No. Um, I mean, this one is nowhere near stock anymore, but it's uh, <laughs> <Really? that's> just... Uh, <laughs> I that's thought Mazda made That's just my thing. thing. <laughs> so you didn't get an A-spec one? Yeah. In import with all this on? In import with anything else. I wish. I wish. Yeah. Um, so, um, no, um, so you, your ownership of this vehicle has been very... Uh, Mixed up and down, yeah. Obviously, yeah. more ups and downs yeah. in the last few years, yeah. which is I've, good. I've, I've really enjoyed it. Um, it's been a great car. It's 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 been a, it's been my introduction into a into a whole new scene, the yeah. RX8 and the and the car scene. Yeah, we now do all the main shows in the UK. So, you, as you said, you were at tracks. Yes. Recently, weren't yeah, you? Yeah, um, yeah. We got invited onto the uh, Adrian Flux stand, which was very kind of them. Um, which was quite it, weird, really, because you just turned up and yeah, invited you onto the yeah, stand there, yeah, and then it was yeah, quite an interesting quite thing. Quite a good, quite a good course, day. With a car like this, Adrian Flux, I'd like to say, specialise in modified vehicle insurance, yes. and they insure me on my RX8, yes. because um, not many people want to. No, a lot um, of people don't want to know, want to know I'm, about. I'm, I'm with Adrian Flux as yeah, well as much yeah. of interest. I mean, and uh, they've been alright with me, to be honest. Yeah, yeah they're, not, they're not the cheapest. Obviously, you can get cheaper insurance, but if on this car particularly, I've had to do a sort of like-for-like -like insurance. So it's, um, it's everything's listed, all the mods are listed on the car, so yeah. it's covered. You know, yeah. If anything happens to the car, which fortunately, mm. earlier this year, after a, after a six-month rebuild, of doing a lot yeah, of, uh, you had the, you had a lot of work done to the sills and yeah, the floor. Yeah, the floor, yeah. the sills. The dreaded corrosion yeah, section. Chass chassis legs. But you used it every day though, yeah. until then, didn't you? Yeah, so it's it, been used. It, you know, using it in the salt and in the thing, you underseal it regularly, but yeah. there's only so much, yeah. isn't there, before yeah. the salt really attacks the car. Yeah. And yeah. sadly, it is a, a thing with RX-8s really at the moment, is rust. Yeah. Uh, if your engine's good, it's chances are it's probably rusty somewhere. <laughs> But luckily, again, this car's had a, another stab at life, hasn't it? Yes, With, and it's yeah. had been fully redone underneath. Yeah, um, everything's been done. All the rust's been sorted out. Um, um, the story when it was finished was um, I picked the car up from Rotary Revs, and I was just going to have um, I had something else that needed doing to it, so I just drove down the road to put some petrol in it. Um, which was literally five minutes down the road. Bearing in mind that this car hadn't been driven for six months. And uh, as I was pulling out the petrol station, a lady very kindly rammed me up the back <laughs> and shunted me into the car in front. Uh, um, the car was um, very close to a write-off. Luckily, I had good insurance. Um, yeah, this is where specialist insurance for modified cars and agent flux yeah. really it really comes into its own. It's in situations like this because if you're insured with like a normal insurer under a normal sort of car, they would have yeah. just written it. Because the values of these are so low now, yeah. they would yeah. have written the car yeah. straight away. Yeah. But the good thing about Adrian Flux is they can actually see someone's value and effort yeah. that they put into the car. And usually, they say, don't they, that the more modified it is in Adrian Flux's eyes, the more you're going to take care of it. Yeah. And the, the lower the premium Unless is. you're going to drive it. Unless you're going to drive it. <laughs> which is obviously something that I like doing and you like doing a lot, you know. Um, so, when, well, the good news was that um, the, the, the lady that crashed into me admitted liability and they decided to do a cash settlement so it didn't go through the insurance in the end. Um, and with the money I got from that, we managed to do a major upgrade to the car. So we changed all the front. So sort of clouds and silver back. linings and yes, everything. Definitely. Um, so this is Anton's car, Mark 2. How did you uh, come about this front end? Or how did you, uh, what did you do to this front end um, to make it? I looked and looked and looked for a, for a front bumper that it suits, that I liked and it suit the car and I wanted to go for a splitter type front end and to be honest I couldn't find anything that really suited that I liked and so we ended up sort of grasping the nettle and making it ourselves and this is the second version of the front splitter that I've made. And it's not complicated, I use um, a, Expanded UPVC called Formex. Yeah. And it's you can cut it and trim it, so it's quite easy to. So it's quite pliable. Quite pliable, easy yeah. to use. It's quite rigid. Um, 
the hangers are, are hung on an aluminium brace that goes across the front as well, so it's quite uh, sturdy yeah. the front. Yeah, because I suppose it's all good making it very uh, thing that you want to, you don't want it to flex no. when you go no. down the road because it probably would stress the crap over yeah. time, wouldn't yeah. it? I mean, so. So originally we just had a small splitter on it, then we did a bigger one, and then we added uh, side side air dams and the front canards to it. Yeah. Um, the thing that I've noticed is what are these here? These they're the daylight running lights. The daytime running lights. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Are they something you just recently done? They were they were the second second phase. We um, we also changed the front grille to get rid of the, the original front grille and to just allow access to the um, racing beat ram air. Yeah, so you, you've got the racing beat ram air ducked on the factory air box. Yeah. Well, we'll probably airbox. come to the engine bay at some point later on in the video. Um, there's, there's more treats for you in store there, everyone. <laughs> but, um, so, so come around um, the car. Standard, standard thing. Um, Seven carbon fiber bonnet. Uh, what, what, what have you found with that then? Because obviously at first you, you were talking about the, uh, the drip trays. Yeah. Um, you yeah. recommend running them with the drip trays. Yeah. They, 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 they take the drip trays out only for um, only for shows really. Leave it in. Because the car's not stored in a garage or anything. So it's, uh, we leave yeah. those in so it can just, all the water can just run through. Yeah, because you said you had a, a water problem, didn't you, where it was dripping onto the barrel, barrel sensor? Yeah. yeah. And it yeah. just that's screwing the sensor up. But to be fair, that. The bonnet's been on for about four years now, and that's the first time I've ever had a problem. So yeah, too bad I don't know, yeah. don't know where that is. why. Um, the arch kit is new. That's a um, lion's kit uh, from Rocket Barnia in Russia. Yeah, um, that's another highlight of the car, really, isn't it? Is the is it really does complement the uh, if you get down and have a look. The, sort of the bumper, how it how it merges into yeah. the rear arch yeah. and the skirt down the side, it really together. does work, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. it really works. Uh, so there's a lion's kit from the from Russia. Yeah. And what was the fit like? Was it an easy fit? The fit was very good. The fit, fit was very good. Because usually yeah. you get stuff for the RX8 and it's a bit hit and miss unless you really go genuine stuff. No, it, it never fine. really fits. So. Fine. Um, quality was fine. Obviously, it's all originally the. Uh, the standard one fits down here, works around here, but because I've got these carbon corners on it, we had to chop it, mm. um, chop it short, and we had to chop it short at the back as well because standard it goes down to the bottom there. Um, uh, but you've got these, got those carbon in motion vents on it. Um, Where do you get them from? Can you remember? A place called Carbon in Motion in in Malaysia. In Malaysia, I think. I think. Um, were they a good fit? No, perfect, yeah. yeah, yeah, perfect. It's quite nice to know. Yeah. I've noticed as well, coming around here, yeah. you've also got the lovely uh, PZ mirrors. PZ mirrors, yeah. yeah, great. And this wasn't a PZ, was it? No, 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 no. no. Nice looking yeah. mirror, but not can't see much out the back. <laughs> no, problem, but, um, no, nice. Hey, who cares? Nice. It looks good. So, so, uh, better than standard. And uh, yeah. what are the, did you make the skirt extensions or are they? Um, the skirts are um, from, um, I think they're called car loving criminals in Poland. Yeah. Besides the, same as uh, yours. Same as my rear bumper, yeah. yeah. Um, and then the carbon splitter at the bottom is from Graham Styling. Yeah. Um, How did you find that fit? That, that's, that side of the skirt? Because um, I found that my car loving criminals bumper wasn't that bad. Yeah, it um, was it was a challenge. It was a challenge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. maybe the bumpers are all right. Yeah. But the um, it did I, need a lot of uh, filler in it and stuff. But it's, it's only held. It's, happens, it's, it's it? only held on with four four bolts, so it's not a massive job. You know, yeah. If, if you need to change it, paint yeah. it again. I don't like your choice there, Anton, with the uh, R three Recaros. Yeah, the, these uh, these were. Um, you well, I remember you. We were at Three Sisters, weren't we? And you sat in mine, yeah. And then that made you decide there and then that you wanted them, didn't they? Because yeah. you sat in my Recaros and was like, I like these. And then a few months later, I saw a picture on your Facebook of yeah. Recaro seats. I was like, Oh, he's found something. But we had a, we had a choice. We could either go for brides or um, what I got a full full R three interior. Which the good thing about the R three interior is it all matches, doesn't yeah. it? So yeah. you're it looks not, neat. Not like mismatch. So the, the door cards, the back seats, everything. And the seats are as comfortable as you want for a daily driver, but yeah. supportive for when you want yeah. to have a little bit yeah. of fun. They're, 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 they're really and weigh about a quarter of what the S one standard were. seats. Yeah, yeah, because yeah. they're not electric or heated anymore. Really. No, no, um, no. 
Uh, honestly, I think the R3 interior is a beautiful interior. Um, like I say, the way it all works together is um, yeah, it's, it's very neat, isn't spot it? On. It's very yeah. neat. Yeah. It it's looks uh, OEM. Got the quick shift on it as well, so it's it's really nice. What the axial flow? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've got that in mind. Yeah, it's really um, I, I like it in mind, but I think it might have destroyed my gearbox. Oh right. Interesting. Interesting. <laughs> but then again, it might not have been that. It might have been my stupid driving. Might have been yeah, your I driving. was just about to say, I think you might have just driven <laughs> <laughs> not the drifter. But it does work fine, ladies and gentlemen. It's just yeah. that it, it's slightly knackered in second and fourth when I... Um, and anyway. so the, 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 roof, the roof is carbon wrap. It's just a wrap, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah just to cover up some... Uh, and then the visor, the what's the visor? The visor is off um, an MX-5. Oh really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Which is then bonded to the um, bonded to the rear. I tell you thing. what, the fit of it, it's, it's not really far right. off, is it? No, it's no. really not far off at all. That I didn't think that would come off an MX5. Yeah, it's quite yes. useful. And, and another the, thing, the the spoiler. rear wing is a um, it's a GT spoiler from Driftworks with oh. custom custom legs and custom stays on the back of it. Um, Mounted to a carbon fiber bonnet, and then a seat and boot lid, yeah, yeah. Which actually, yeah. for one of these, carbon, <laughs> usually a lot of these carbon fiber things don't really fit properly. But we're just pointing out just how well it does actually. Yeah, fit. the the, the seat is about as good as it yeah. gets. Yeah, it's, it's as good as it gets, it's, really. It's really good. But it's really how much good. are these boot lids to buy? Near about a thousand quid. About a thousand, yeah. So yeah. yeah, about the same price as the boot lid. Yeah. The so point. what you what was just saying is it's quite funny is you made the boot lid lighter, but then you bolted a huge wing on, so it's <laughs> heavier than the stock boot lid. Yeah. But hey. It looks good, doesn't it? So it's all the point. Um, back end is again a standard back end. It's got um, an aero kit rear balance on it, which is this part here. And um, it's then got the diffuser made again, same as the front splitter. Um, again, Gram styling number plate holder, Gram styling rear diffuser. So. Um, uh, Exhaust yeah. is um, racing beat, manifold, straight pipe, rear... Full racing beat system. Full racing beat system. Yeah. Rear box with a single exit. Yeah. Um, with a with extension big, on the end of it. Big extension. Get any flames? Yeah, how many do you want? <laughs> <laughs> do you have a flame off one day? Yes, one day. Yeah. One day, Rob, when, your gearbox, is, when your gearbox is working. <laughs> <laughs> it's alright, I'll use first, third and fifth. Um, six. <laughs> <I'm all right. laughs> rear lights are a copy of the R3 rear lights, just a LED version of it with it. So um, we went with a um, yellow speed racing coilover um, many years ago. Oh, well, originally we had um, Bill Steins. Bill Steins and I bought and used off it. you. Yeah. There's a lot of yeah. things that I bought off this guy. Right? <laughs> And to be fair, then Bill Steins were fabulous, yeah. weren't they? Yeah. Good, um, good the only reason I swapped to the Meisters is for a bit of extra height. Yeah. And also because one of the shocks was knocking. Yeah. Because uh, the shock had, had finally given up. But it was old. They were old, weren't they? They were really old. They were really yeah, old. Yeah. I bought them a few yeah. years old off you, didn't yeah. I? Yeah. 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 So we went from the Bill Steins, we went to a yellow speed racing coilover, which was um, ideal for setting the ride height, but just couldn't get along with them. They were just too bangy and crashy for me. They were, just not right. Yeah, a, a lot of people with RX-8s have said that coilovers are a really finicky thing about them, yeah. especially when you're using them on the road, yeah. um, that they can be too bouncy or too soft and bottom out too yeah. easy. Yeah. You, you, they're very hard to set them up, yeah. like they seem to respond better. If you just want your RX-8 to drive on the road and then occasionally use it on a track, I think that maybe the Bill Stein shocks, and the PZ shocks and the lowered springs, and the lowered springs are, the, are the way to go with yeah. the PZ yeah. struts. Yeah. Um, Unless you've, like say, unless you've got a master speed bumper. Unless you've got a master speed bumper, which yes. is about that high off the ground, yeah. and you need extra height. But luckily, I think we've managed to both stumble on. We both now have the same set of coilovers on. We both yeah. got Meister our CID pluses, on, yeah. and um, they're recommended by Ben to me. I don't yeah. know about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah they're, I, they're they're really nice and they're adjustable. However you want them, hard, soft, high, low, you, yeah. you name well, it. You can. So wheels. Um, I've had rotor wheels now for um, probably getting on for nine years and um, these are just the second set I've had um, rotor grids. Uh, and just to clarify, I didn't go for the second set because the first one's cracked or anything. That no, no, says no, 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 we just wanted um, to go slightly bigger. So yeah. um, these are... To uh, fill, fill the new fill, arches. Fill the new yeah. arches, yeah. yeah. So we went basically an inch bigger all around, so the 19 inch. Um, with uh, nine and a half on the front and ten and a half on the back, 
we're running um, 20 mil spaces on the front and 35 mil at the back. Much, much poke. <laughs> much poke. Yeah. Um, front brakes are a D2 six piston caliper with a, um, I think it's a 365 disc. Um, just obviously drilled. They look like a really nice set of brakes. To they be are honest. really nice. Yeah, really nice. They've been on the car for a long time now. And then the the rear discs are the standard standard setup, but with um, I think they're called black diamond discs on them. I think I've got the same. Which is drilled and slotted. Yeah, I think I are they fully drilled? Yeah, they yeah. are. Yeah. I mean, I I got the nice, same as mine, nice. and but mine are just nice. screwed, I think. Yeah. And um, the, the the nice thing about them was is that they paint them black, don't they? That's right. And then when the brake wears, yeah. it just wears off the bit that your brakes yeah. are touching. Yeah. So your brake discs always never look rusty. Such a good idea yeah. that. Um, especially something that annoys me um, about a lot of cars. The, the rusty, rusty brakes. Yeah. Especially this bit of the brake here, a bit where it like before, in between the wheel and the actual yeah. disc itself, yeah. they usually corrode on cars and they look nasty. Yeah. But the good thing about them black diamonds is they don't do that, do they? No. No. Um, no really not. What pads are you running then? Um, Brembo pads on the back. Brembo pads on the back. Yeah. And then and the D2 pads on the, the D2 back. pads on the front. And then um, if you care to show us yeah. what you've done under here. Now, fellow RX-8 enthusiasts, uh, take note. That's what an engine bay should look like. <laughs> it so, is hands down, Anton. I've got to say it to you, that's the most gorgeous engine bay I've ever seen in an RX-8. I just think you've done a really wonderful job of making everything, the blue and the gold and the silver and everything's all clean and shiny. And it's all maintained. Even all the nuts and everything are all nice and done, you know, and the little cheeky little slogan here. Rotary, because fuel economy and reliability are overrated. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to, that's the thing with these cars, you've got to be able to poke fun at them for that, yeah. haven't you? When, and own them. But if you don't, then you, you're not going to enjoy it. You, you've got to learn to... stress out about it. You don't get stressed out about fuel economy and stuff with this. Um, uh, do you want to talk us through then? This is a half-bridged engine, isn't half it? Half-bridged, yeah. Yeah, by Rotary Revs. Um, and what are you finding it? Finding it... It's, it's good. fine, yeah, 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 yeah it's fine. Yeah. I have no, no issues with it. Um, we did some uh, polishing and stuff when we had the engine out, so we, we polished the yeah. alternator, yeah. the intake manifold. Yeah, I, I, I went for a slightly different option with mine, I picked my black. Right. Um, and as you can see, even here, look, the throttle body here, as you can see, is all polished as yeah. well. The, um, the actual intake manifold down there, and this is all plastic, and it's yeah. been painted silver. Painted that, yeah. And to be honest with you, it's not bad because you know, how hard it is to paint plastic, yeah. especially like that kind of plastic. You always are going to get like little tiny marks and yeah. stuff in it anyway. But it, it's that sort of plastic is a nightmare to really paint properly, isn't it? At the end of the day, well, it does flake off as you it can flakes see off there, but the it, does, heat, yeah. it needs you're touching up now. Yeah, it? it's not a problem really, is it? Um, um, so other things we've got um, Cusco strut brace. I'm going to hide that for now because uh, we want to come to that later. Uh, <laughs> um, with the extra stop on the brake servo, which is which is great. Yeah, um, I mean it's such a good idea. It's such a good idea. Because yeah. um, I noticed with mine when I was pumping the brakes up on Nebs, I it was yeah. actually on the, the club that we go to, how much movement. It must be about half an inch yeah, that the servo yeah. moves backwards and forwards when you push the brake pedal right. firmly. Um, so, um, other things, we've obviously got the uh, oil catch can, which is this one. Um, we've got the uh, additive um, reservoir as well, in exactly the same style, which was just sort of custom made and fitted, so they sit together. Uh, that's working into a sewn adapter on the. Uh, yeah. Because that's the biggest difference between mine and yours is you're, you've run the sewn kit, haven't you? Yeah. Have yeah. you had any issues running the sewn no, kit? No, no issues at all. At all. Just don't so, let it run out. Don't let it run out is yeah. the big issue there. It's basically, what it's saying is, is there's no right or wrong um, to running a sewn or not a sewn. Unless yeah. you're wrong. I mean, because you definitely forget. <laughs> yeah, yeah, unless you forget. Unless yeah. you're Rob and then you'll yeah. forget to fill yeah. it up. Yeah. <laughs> Probably good reason I mean, for me to. The only beauty is that it's. Putting two-stroke additive straight into the straight into the engine and not using some oil. So yeah. yeah. If you want to be like Rob and change your oil every 300 miles, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> three thousand, don't Three thousand. So yeah, <laughs> it's it's what it is. You know yeah. What I mean? There's no right. Basically, what we're saying is there's no right or wrong. Other things we've done is what is uh, this anyway? That's interesting. This is um, voltage stabilizer. Yeah, D1 spec voltage stabilizer. 
Uh, so, is there any reason you got that? Or? It's gold and it's got blue lights. <laughs> 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 no, it just it just gives you a monitor monitoring of your battery all the it time. It looks pretty cool, and, to be honest with um, you. You can run extra Earths off it for your for your D five eight five. So, does this coils. always switch on? Is this always yeah, on? Yeah, it's always on. So, does it ever take any power out your battery, nope. or is it pretty no. good for that? No, I think the idea behind them is they they store a little bit of power yeah. so that when you um, you get a voltage drop it's designed to stop the voltage drops stop, stop flat spots and stuff basically right, so that's your, pretty good actually yeah. Yeah. and it, does that display voltage there 12.6 yeah. 12. 5 12.5 I think it is at the moment well, that's pretty good as well yeah. something to think about um, you can see you've got the Ingalls uh, torque damper across the engine um, not that we're ever going to get massive amounts of torque out of it. But, uh, <laughs> it looks pretty, doesn't it? It looks pretty, and it saves your engine mounts basically. Um, stops vibration through. And the it car. also acts as a nice little um, detail here to like do the pipe work yeah. and keep it all yeah. tied up neat. Yeah. Um, and um, other things, the petite racing um, coolant system. This is a, a sealed system that adds capacity to the to your cooling system and then the reservoir is a separate tank which has been moved to the back there that's uh, like a work of art that world <laughs> yeah, yeah just welding on it it's, it's, worth, it's, it's worth every penny just it's for petite the racing isn't it i mean the quality is amazing yeah. my radiator's from petite racing yeah and it's amazing yeah. and just um really nice gear really, really nice normal. quality item yeah. yeah even removing the bung plug in the bottom and tight you know to drain the coolant <laughs> out it's such a nice feeling because it's, it's not like cheap plastic or anything it's proper metal and it's nicely brazed and um petite racing stuff although expensive yeah it is very good it's, isn't it? it's like racing bait yeah. stuff as yeah. well isn't it it's yeah. expensive but it works yeah and um i think if you really want to modify these cars now they get to a point where they need to be done properly yeah yeah and um, we stayed with the standard airbox which i've just put a, a gold um, cover on it um, using a green cotton panel filter in it which yeah, is it's just basically easy. a McLaren F1 then isn't it yeah you know yeah it's just heat. to stop heat yeah. soak you basically got a McLaren <laughs> F1 there with your gold yeah, uh, I wish <laughs> I wish um, but what what kind of filters are you running then are you just green, running a green, green cotton um, panel, filter. panel filter yeah with a yeah. racing beat Revy duct yeah it's just the air duct up the to air duct here, here and yeah. then it's which like you say, can't see because it should be under here yeah um, you can't see yeah. it at all, but um, that's another nice thing as well. I mean, where do you get this from? That's a Cusco one as well. Cusco um, uh, slam, uh, panel, slam panel. Yeah. Um, pulleys wise, I noticed where, where your pulleys you got yeah, lighter pulleys were, as well. They were. Um, I'm not quite sure what the maker those were. They weren't. Uh, they weren't. They weren't a, a branded one. I don't think. Um, but they were just lightweight, and they, they were the ones that were um, the front pulley was balanced in when we balanced the crank and lightened the rotors. So it's um, it's all part of the rotating assembly. Yeah. yeah. Um, and the hose kit is a heavy set hose kit that you can't heavy get. Heavy set hose kit. <laughs> you can't get anymore. To be honest they're with they're you, very nice. I've mean, never had any issues with them. I, must admit, I, I still get I still get asked about the hose kit now. I had a I had a message of someone the other week about it. So maybe it's worth considering Ash. Yeah. You've still got the, the, the design just, for the moulds. Just start business just doing RX-8 hose kits. <laughs> well, the thing is, though, if you've got an RX-8, you should have a lot of money to be able to waste on hose kits, shouldn't you? Yeah, should do. Because, um, unless you spend it all on petrol and two-stroke oil. And two-stroke And maintenance yeah. Yeah. and yeah. everything. And everything else. Ev rust. Yeah. And, and rust prevention. Rust prevention. Yeah. <laughs> um, um, yeah. Other things on the engine, um, D5-8 coil kit. Fabulous, which we've, which we've, Absolutely yeah, fabulous. Which we had on the... Um, which was put on after the first rebuild. Yeah, uh, never had a problem with them since. Never had a exactly. No. And, and then uh, the last, one of the last bits is uh, what are these solenoids at the top for? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is um, an NOS nitrous kit. There the we go. Um, plumbed into the uh, spacer just behind the throttle body. You can see there. Um, obviously, one for nitrous, one for fuel. Um, your car obviously topped out 140 mile an hour this morning, didn't <laughs> it? Obviously. And you need NOS. Not that I ever did that. You need NOS. Not that I've ever done it. You need NOS. You need, do you need NOS. Do you need NOS? You need NOS in your life. You need NOS. I need NOS. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Uh, Dude, I must hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> Too soon, Junior. <laughs> oh, uh, nice spot in the boot. Um, obviously, you can see the. Um, Meister coil overs here and the uh, rear Cusco strut brace um, and the ever presence. Very, very extinguished. <laughs> Working back to the driver. Um, 
have the uh, OMP steering wheel. Um, and that's arm and fire these, it. Um, yeah, these are um, for the nitrous kit. So one's a purge button and one's the fire button. Um, I love that. <laughs> Can you just have fire in big cat? <laughs> <laughs> um, we have the, the nitrous gauge here for when it's up to pressure. Um, How far has that off been plumbed in and working then? About a day. Right, um, should we wrap it up there? Yeah, I think we should wrap yeah. it up there. Yeah, awesome. Well, thank um, you very much. Thank you very much for showing us around it. And, All um, right, it's been I'm a sure pleasure. We'll, I'm sure we'll probably do another video in a couple of years when it's changed oh, again. Oh, we'll <laughs> that. Oh, what do you mean a couple of years? When it's couple repainted. Years. Yeah. A couple of years, I'm really a couple of months. <laughs> no, I mean, like you said, cheers, Anton, for showing us around your car. Hopefully, it asks a few questions of, um, to a lot of the people in the community is how yeah. you do things and yeah. um, what you've done and how you found them and stuff like that. Um, if you obviously uh, liked this video, then hit that like button because that's really important. Yeah. Because it many does. likes is very goodness. It does help the videos out massively, so uh, make sure you give it a like. <laughs> and um, if there's anything you're wondering about the car, drop it in the comments. We'll try our best to answer it. Um, and we'll catch you in the next video. Peace out.